Hello guys and welcome back to a new Spring Boot security episode. Today we are going to configure role-based authorization in our Spring Boot application, which means we are going to take our existing roles and allow access to some resources based on a user's role. Now, before we get started, I would like to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for more courses that will sharpen your programming skills. This is where we left off. Uh, we have created you know, our application with a couple of pages and some REST APIs. We have configured basic HTTP authentication. We've created a couple of users. And now each time we authenticate, we can access you know, every portion of this application. Now, of course, in real scenarios, this is not exactly what you would like. Instead, what you would want is to permit granular access to resources. For example, this homepage, you know, because it doesn't contain any sensitive inf information, could be accessible by everybody, even anonymous users. You now, the, the profile page should be accessible, for example, by everybody who is authenticated, because every authenticated user should have a profile. The admin section, on the other hand, should only be accessible by people who have an admin role. And the management section, for example, should be accessible by people who have a management role. Or maybe even better, by people who have either admin role or management role, because you can consider that the admin is a kind of super user. And in order to achieve this, we need to tweak our Spring Security configuration and start to create these matching rules. We want to match, um, uh, you know, HTTP requests and then perform some sort of authorization on them. Now, before we look at the code, please take a look at these URLs. So the home is just, you know, home. Profile is dash profile dash index or dash whatever. Admin is dash admin dash whatever and management, you know, we have all the views in dash management dash whatever. So these are the, you know, routes that you want to secure. And let's see how we can do that now. I fired up IntelliJ and I took the liberty of creating another user called manager, uh, which has the role of manager. Okay, so now that we have our users in place, we need to work here at the configure method which receives an HTTP security parameter. So right now, uh, any request uh, needs to be authenticated. So that is our only authorization rule, which means any user, regardless of his role, can access pretty much anything in his app. And we want to change that. We want to implement role-based authentication. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing that we need to do, if we remember correctly, is to uh, allow everybody to access the home page so this you know root index page and for that we can use ant matchers you know so ant matchers we're going to see something like index.html and now we can see something like permit all so this uh, resource is you know accessible by everybody regardless if he's authenticated or not then uh, for the profile uh, view which is located here so dash profile dash index or dash profile dash whatever uh, we want to allow access only to authenticated users because every user should have you know access to his profile so again we're going to use the ant matchers and we'll say profile dash index and now we can say authenticated so everybody who accesses this route should be authenticated Okay, so do notice that I did not use, you know, HTML. So uh, we can secure, you know, resources like this or we can secure routes. Okay, and most often than not, we will choose to secure routes or folders, not individual pages. Um, okay, now uh, the admin section should be only, uh, should be accessible by somebody who has the role of admin. So again, we are going to use an ant matcher. So it's admin dash index because that's our, that's our only route in there. And now we can use this method has role and we'll pass in the admin role. Now, of course, this uh, role needs to match with the role that we defined here. So if you don't spell it correctly, then obviously it won't work. 
And finally, the management section should be secure, should be accessible only to people who are either administrators or managers. And again, we'll go ant matchers and management index route. And now we have has any role method. And now we can pass in you now a couple of roles. So admin and manager. And this is our basic role based uh, configuration. And as you saw, everything starts with an ant matcher because you want to restrict access to a certain resource folder or route. And then uh, after we have this method and matchers, we can then decide who has access to view it. And we've looked at, you know, permit all, authenticated, has role, has any role, which are the most commonly used, you know, forms of granting access. So just for lines of code, and now if we restart the application, we should be able to check it out. Okay, our application started. We'll fire up a new incognito window. We'll go to localhost 8082. And okay, so we have access to the home page, which is cool. And let's try to access our profile. So now when we access the profile, we need to you know provide in some uh, credentials. So let's use Dan with Dan123. And now we can access home and profile, but if you try to go to admin or management, we'll get this forbidden 403 error. And that's perfectly fine because we are not allowed to actually view this resource. So let's try to uh, log in again. And this time let's try to do it with, for example, um, uh, manager or admin. Okay, so we're trying to access this. We'll hit admin, admin123. And now we can view the admin section, the profile section, and the management section. Okay, so it appears that our role-based authorization uh, works, which is perfectly cool. And now let's try to improve this a little bit. In our current configuration, we've matched specific routes in our end matchers. But let's assume, for example, that maybe this admin section has more views than just index. Maybe we have uh, views for creating users, for showing reports, for adding content to our site. Maybe the manager has more views than just you know a global index page. Maybe he has views to uh, view sale reports or stuff like that. And the way we configured our ant matches right now, although it's pretty granular, uh, it's not exactly helping us to scale out our application because you can imagine if the admin folder here has like 20 views, we kind of need to duplicate this code for each view. And that is not, that's just not scalable. So uh, maybe there's a way to match every route that goes to dash admin dash whatever to be secured with the role admin. And we can do that for management as well without having to constantly add each new view or each new route in here. And luckily for us, uh, we can do that. And it's pretty easy. For example, um, instead of providing, you know, concrete routes, we can actually say something like that. So if we if we say dash admin dash to stars or dash profile dash to stars, it will match anything that you know has dash profile dash whatever. Um, it will capture that route, and the same goes for admin, and the same goes for for management. Now the root page, you know, we con because it's, it's just a single root page, we secure it um, using, you know, a fixed page. But for example, for the other sections for profile admin and management, we want to secure every sub resource under this route or under that folder with uh, these permissions. And this will help us to scale out our application because if we add routes here, or if you add views here, or if you if we add views here, it will help us to um, scale up our application without having to make any modification to our uh, security. And remember what I said in a previous episode, you need to do security upfront because 
obviously as you're seeing now how you structure your application how you structure your views how you structure your public apis your routes affects how you configure security later and if you don't structure them well then you'll have issues and problems configuring security in an efficient manner so again i reiterate my advice security needs to be done at the very beginning of a project in order to you know speed things up and be very efficient with it otherwise you'll just lose time along the way okay so i fired up the application again and of course everything should work as expected so we're trying to reach profile okay we log in with manager manager one to three okay i can view home profile management i cannot hit admin so everything seems to be working perfectly Another important thing that you need to be aware of is that the order in which you put your end matchers here is very, very important because each time an HTTP request, you know, comes into your application, these end matchers are executed in exactly this order to try and determine which authorization rules to apply. Uh, so, for example, if I am to do something like this here, so any request permit all, you know, I, I would have an HTTP request, it would come through this chain through this pipeline and once it hits this matcher then you know we have permit all and that view will be displayed the other matchers will not even get triggered so okay let's actually see this but be very very aware and um, pay attention to the order in which you place your matchers uh, here because if you make mistakes here then you can accidentally allow more access or restrict uh, more things than you would like to okay so the application fired up we'll go to localhost 882 okay and now see i can browse through i can browse through this application without even having to be authenticated and even though i have rules here they don't get triggered because i accidentally placed um uh, a rule that is too permissive um, at the very beginning of this chain so do pay attention to this but other than that you know as you can see from this episode it's not it's actually pretty simple to configure uh, role-based authority for your views in spring boot applications before we close i would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at Romanian Coder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.